using PyTorch for monocular depth estimation. My name is Susan Kaler, and I work in AI technical product marketing at Intel. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Bob Cheesebro. Bob is a senior solutions architect at Intel. Bob's industry experience is in software development and AI solution engineering for Fortune 100 companies and national laboratories for over three decades. He is also a hobbyist who has logged over 800 miles and a thousand hours in the field finding dinosaur bones. He and his sons discovered the only known crocodilian fossil from the Jurassic period in New Mexico. They have also discovered and logged over 200 bone localities and, and even described a new mass bone bed in New Mexico. Over to you, Bob. Susan, thank you for that intro. That was awesome. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. I want to show you one of the projects I um, accomplished with this monocular depth estimation model from Hugging Face uh, using PyTorch. And so uh, to get started, if you want to play this uh, at home and follow along with your bingo card, you can do that. I've uh, highlighted the uh, Git repo here in the URL. It's called Dinosaur Depth Map Clipping. And uh, I'll show you the QR code in case you that's your favorite way of doing it. My QR code here that uh, Susan provided me has a dinosaur in the middle. So you'll see the dinosaur connection here directly. Uh, I've also written a Medium article that if you want to read more about what I did here, you can just follow this link. Uh, the uh, idea, though, is I wanted to describe what are we trying to do with this monocular depth estimation? Well, first of all, what is monocular depth estimation? Mono means one. And ocular has to do with images or vision. So monocular means single image. So monocular depth estimation is inferring relative depth from a single image. So you don't need the stereo pairs of images. And so the idea here is, you know, sort of look at each of these rows. These are dinosaurs that I took pictures of at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History in Albuquerque. And so these are actual dinosaurs I took images of. And then there's various... Uh, visual elements uh, from the different angles that I took of that dinosaur uh, from different perspectives. And I just wanted to kind of see if I could use monocular depth estimation to pull out the dinosaur because I'm more into looking at the comparative anatomy and seeing if a bone that we found matches something on the stegosaurus. So I might be looking at a particular rib uh, in the neck or, you know, something like that or a femur or a humerus. So uh, it's I, it's just a, a part of my hobbyist nature to want to be able to pull out, first of all, the dinosaur. So what I've done is I've used the monocular depth estimation, and I'll show you where you can grab this uh, code on, on Hugging Face and so forth. But uh, we uh, take this um, uh, in a, just a minimal lines of code to be able to uh, do monocular depth estimation. I feed it one of these images. Let's take the one down on the bottom. The one down on the bottom is a stegosaurus at the museum and in the background there's a mural and the mural has a, a painting of a stegosaurus and an allosaurus and a riverbed uh, but you know the the visual elements that i care about are those things closest to the camera and so what monocular depth estimation allows you to do is to uh, have an algorithm that paints in uh, numbers zero through 255 the relative depth from the camera with 255, the bright things being the closest to the camera and the things that are black being the things furthest away from the camera. And so you'll see that uh, what's amazing about the monocular depth estimation is that it's not fooled, let's say by the size of the stegosaurus on the mural down in the lower left. Um, you know, it's not fooled by any of those pixels. It knows that this uh, dinosaur up front, that th those are the dominant pixels. Those are the things that that uh, comprise the object. And so what I can do is use monocular depth estimation to have that mapping from 0 to 255 of the representation of the dinosaur in the image. And then it's just a simple matter of using a clipping algorithm to take a threshold of, let's say, you know, some value 66, for example, for, you know, some gray uh, scale and say anything greater than 66 are the pixels that I'll keep. And so then I can apply a clipping mask to actually pull the dinosaur out as I've done in the far right over there. So that's the overview of what we're going to be talking about. 
Uh, let me go into some of the details. And here's some other images I did with just some pottery. But uh, uh, in the notebook, you'll see that uh, now these are commented out. So you, you may want to, um, uh, you know, do the control slash to uncomment those. And then you would run these cells to do the pip installs for the um, uh, transformers and so forth. So uh, anyway, there's uh, uh, here's our, our dependency chain right here. So this is kind of the, the um, uh, setup, the way we start. Uh, just a little bit more about monocular depth estimation. I sort of articulated it um, extemporaneously as we were going through. The, the monocular depth estimation model that I'm talking about uh, it comes from something called Midas, and it's something that our, the Intel Labs team posted to Hugging Face, and it's called um, Multiple Depth Estimation Accuracy with Single Network. And so uh, the specific model uh, that's built on Midas is uh, DPT, be it large 512. So this is the depth uh, estimation uh, algorithm. Now we have multiple sizes of this algorithm we have sizes that range from you know 384 and 256 so the 512 uh, uses an internal uh, resolution of 500 by 12 by 512 and so it take, it's a little bit slower but it's a little bit more accurate and more precise in doing the depth estimation where the smaller models like 256 those could be done uh, quicker to real time uh, if, if that's your need for for um, doing depth estimation in videos and so I just wanted to uh, give attribution where it's due. So uh, Reiner Burkle, Diana uh, Wafk, and Matthias M Mueller from Intel uh, created this model and put it on Hugging Face. And you can uh, get the code as I've, I've shown you how to do. You just go to where the model card lives, and you can download any of these, the uh, large 34 or the Swin version 2, Tiny 256. But these all do the same thing. There's also some videos I wanted to call your attention to. Uh, both for Midas in general, so you can click on the link to this YouTube video, or an application of this technology to something called LMagic, which is a language model-assisted uh, generation of images with coherence. And this is also by Intel Labs. And I'll be kind of uh, hand-waving you, sh showing you what is possible by combining uh, this depth estimation, monocular depth estimation, um, and you can follow their code, but what they did is that they combined that technique with stable diffusion to create a virtual panorama uh, given an image, a single image. So the, the applications of this are much larger than what I'm going to show you. I'm just going to get you started with the baby steps. So those baby steps include importing torch and transformers and um, pill is what I'm using. Uh, the pillow and i also use some numpy but um what i do is is uh, i read the image the original image so this is all fairly straightforward stuff so here's the original image that i'm going to be consuming it's a stegosaurus with that mural okay and i'm wanting to convert that image to this image of the 3d dinosaur with the mural removed and you'll see that there's a few little artifacts. I could probably tweak the thresholds and I could uh, fiddle with that and make it maybe slightly better. But this is really great for me because this is just in one fell swoop and in a snap of my fingers, I can create these um, uh, cleaned up images and then I can start using those for comparative anatomy and, and whatnot. So this is a secret sauce. Basically, you uh, uh, use these uh, methods from the... Um, uh, DPT library. So you use DPT image processor, and then you use the DPT for a depth estimation uh, uh, methods, basically. So are those uh, uh, objects. And then you use the method methods called from pre-trained. So we're going to use the pre-trained weights, and we're specifying which of those models we want. So in this case, I'm going to choose the uh, large 512 version of that library from Intel. And so I have both a processor and a model um, sort of uh, class that I can uh, call methods against. And so now it's it's uh, really just a matter of reading my images into an inputs. And uh, then I'm going to make sure that I'm using torch, specifying no gradients here. Uh, and then I'm just going to uh, process those inputs and get them in the right format by calling the model uh, on those inputs to get an output uh, array or tensor. And then I'm going to uh, 
get my predicted uh, uh, depth using the predicted depth method of the outputs. And so that's that's what I'm going to do, or the predicted uh, um, attribute. And so uh, <clears throat> this is the way we do it. We're going to uh, uh, use uh, PyTorch to do uh, functional interpolation to kind of smooth out the, the images that we're, we're getting. So uh, this is just kind of standard image processing type stuff that you do. Uh, we're going to get the inputs from the uh, process those inputs. And so that's what we're doing here. And then again, we're turning the, the gradient off. Uh, we uh, apply the model to the inputs, we get an output, and then we can get the predicted depths from those from that output. So it's very simple. And uh, again, we're just going to smooth it, you know, make sure everything is uh, interpolated in, in some uh, fashion. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, convert this to make sure that that uh, uh, all my pixels are numbered between 0 and 255, uh, interpreting them as unsigned int 8s, and then I'm going to display it. And so that's uh, really how I'm going to get the depth uh, estimation. And then from that, I'm going to create a clipping mask. And the way that I do that is that I um, uh, set a threshold. In this case, I've played with it a little bit and found that for this particular image, 66 was a, was a really good threshold. And then I just simply uh, go through uh, the array and say wherever the, um, the vector or the, the tensor is greater than the threshold, uh, give me back the original pixels uh, A, otherwise uh, put a zero there. And so uh, just by doing this, I can convert that uh, depth map to this clipping mask that you see here in black and white. Then I can use that clipping mask to just do an image composite. Uh, and so I can take the um, image, I can convert it to RGB, uh, convert the black image to RGB just so that it can be consistent. And then I use my mask with the one parameter to basically just say, well, I'm using RGB, just, just clip everything, um, yes, no. And so then uh, I display the image, and then this is what I what I generate. So this is just at a high level, you know, kind of showing you a simple use case to um, use depth estimation. But um, there are more clever ways to do uh, use this technology. And so one, uh, the Intel Labs team uh, put together this um, model called L Magic, and I'll, I'll show you. I'll share with you the location where you can go to their Git link and you can look at their project and, and you can um, really dig into this if you want. I've shown you the simple, just get started quickly kind of approach. Uh, what they did is that they combined um, stable diffusion and depth estimation, monocular depth estimation to do some really cool stuff. And so um, I can show you here, there's a link to the video here and uh, I'm not gonna play the video for you. But um, this is what the uh, thumbnail of the video looks like. Uh, I've kind of extracted from the video the highlights, the high points. And so uh, the modalities that you can use for L Magic are a text to panorama, an image to pan panorama, and then some other modalities. And I'll show you what happens. This is right from the video. I'd really encourage you to watch the video. It's really fascinating to see that they're generating an entire scene within a uh, taking from one image or, or just some text, um, they can paint an entire panoramic scene for inside a house, for example. And so there's two examples here. And if you play that video or if you go to their code and play with it, you'll see exactly how to do this. And you, you can just turn it on and play with it. And so uh, in this particular case, they did stable diffusion and depth estimation to uh, see that, you know, like the, the details of the of the tables and the, and the couches and that Certain things are further away on the walls. And so they build a much more realistic panorama when they spin this around. When you watch the video, it's just really amazing. Uh, here's a case where they took just a single image and they did the same thing uh, based on images as an input. And so here it's an outdoor scene and they actually generated this uh, panorama uh, right here. Now there's uh, other technologies that do this, text to room and different ones, but um, this uh, L magic has been a uh, really cool and I, I really ex encourage you to, to play with it and see what you can do. Here's some of the other modalities that you can apply. So this is putting depth estimation into practice in some really compelling ways. So in this case, uh, you can actually take the depth map itself as an input and uh, generate uh, rooms or whatever, a, a panorama from that. You can take a sketch and you can convert this into um, 
a, a, a panorama of a room. Or you, you can even do use these things for outdoor scenes. So here's a case where they have a color script and they say this is the important thing right here. And so they're going to generate a panorama around, uh, you know, built outdoors around an, an object. So I'm going to leave you with the um, uh, QR codes for the L Magic as well. So this is the application of uh, uh, monocular depth estimation, both the project page and the code. You can click there. And then I just wanted to kind of encourage you that you can play with all these things on our Intel Tiber Developer Cloud. And there are other application areas. You can imagine using this for self-driving cars. You can imagine it for robotics applications. You know, in, in, in robotics, a lot of times when you have constrained robots in a controlled environment, you know all the coordinates of your end effector. And, you know, it's basically the gripper on, think of it as your fingers, or whatever the tool is that you're using. Uh, but in an unconstrained uh, situation, such as in the real world, you have a robot interacting with the outside world in an uncontrolled um, environment then uh, being able to estimate you know, the position of the end effector with respect to objects that you want to grip or manipulate. Uh, let's say, you know, you're wanting to do some work on a, uh, uh, you know, a nacelle or on, on wind turbines, you know, and so you build a robot to, to basically be able to uh, drill and, and, and patch um, wind turbine blades. Um, in dangerous situations. Well, if you have an end effector to do those drilling and the patching and whatever you, you have, then uh, having a monocular depth estimation to be able to know where you are relative to that, that um, uh, defect with respect to your tool could be really important. So these are just some of the ideas of things that you can do. And I just encourage you to play with this on our developer cloud, our Intel Tiber developer cloud. You can sign up for free. And then you can play with the code right from the GitHub that I shared with you. And so I just wanted to leave you just real quickly. Uh, I'm always required to ex explain the machine details of what it was that I ran on. And so I, I'll just throw this on there as a disclaimer. But uh, uh, aside from that, I'm going to leave you with the QR code here for uh, playing with the code yourself. You can go to the Intel Developer Cloud and uh, begin to play the Intel Tiber Developer Cloud. And with that, I think it's a wrap.